It's great to see Age of Empires making a reappearance after so many years. But is it what the fans of the series are after? The latest Age of Empires game has split the crowd a bit. Some love it and the changes that have been made compared to previous Age of Empires games, and others not so much. So to help you come to a conclusion if you're looking to buy the game, Nex and I are going to jump into some of the changes and let you know what we think. Hey guys and welcome back. Today, Nex and I are going to be breaking down what we think of Age of Empires 4, the latest installment in the Age of Empires franchise. That's come almost exactly six years after the third game. We'll go over what we liked, what we didn't really like so much, and ultimately whether or not it's worth putting out your wallet for. As always, if you feel like you want to support the channel and you've enjoyed the content, feel free to leave a like below. Or if you want to stick with us for a while, you can become a subscriber. Released on the 28th of October, Age of Empires 4 brings back the popular turn-based strategy that gamers have come to love. Most of us, if we're PC players, have probably played at least one Age of Empires game in the past. Whether it was back in the day when friends were collecting over land, or more recently with the help of modern technology. To be honest, as someone who's sunk hours and hours into Age of Empires, playing AoE 2 back in school and even up to present day, I have to say that honestly we were a little disappointed with this new arrival of the winning formula. From the get-go it seemed a little childish in its art style. Character models have comically large weapons, and the overall aesthetic and detail seems to have gone down a route which we found difficult to follow, at least without asking why they'd chosen that path. The details from games like Age of Empires 2 was completely gone, replaced with a more cartoony aesthetic, which to be fair some people might love, but we personally thought it was a step in the wrong direction. Not only that, but Age of Empires 4 came out six years after Age of Empires 3, and it just doesn't seem to have come as far visually as we were expecting. And that's not necessarily to say it's bad, it's just not that good. But superficial art and graphic choices aside, the gameplay isn't bad either. It's pretty much what you'd expect from an Age of Empires title. It just feels very safe, without much innovation or anything added that really builds upon what they've come with before. Relic have made some improvements here and there, but for the most part it's just a rehash of an existing formula, but unfortunately one that seems to have been cut down which is both good and bad. As you may know, Age of Empires 4 has some rather big boots to fill, particularly when it's attempting to one-up one of their most successful titles, Age of Empires 2. 2 was a game that naturally evolved through a strong community learning every nuance there was to know inside out, with YouTubers like my favourites, T90 Official, Spirit of the Law and Ozzy Drongo keeping the fires burning through their entertaining content. The challenge here would be to keep what made 2 so brilliant, whilst producing a sequel that matches the modern age of gaming through its features and competitive elements. But what we found was a rather mixed bag. If you're familiar with Age of Empires then you'll have no trouble jumping straight in. For the most part the flow of gameplay is similar, working your way through the technological ages for your chosen civilization. This fourth installment brings a great tutorial and campaign that acts as a sort of interactive history lesson for the player, mixing gameplay with documentary style footage to help build their narrative. But we like to focus on the multiplayer and co-op elements, and it's really the core appeal of this series to the majority of its player base. And to that effect, we found a perfectly acceptable modern RTS strategy game that quite possibly doesn't bring anything groundbreaking to the scene, but is just enough of a refresh for new players to give the franchise a chance. After all, Age of Empires 3 released back in 2005. On release, there are eight civilizations to choose from. Abbasid Dynasty, Chinese, Delhi Sultanate, English, French, Holy Roman Empire, Mongols and Rus, each one with distinct bonuses and unique units. And it's this element that really narrows the playstyle of each one to focus slightly more on these unique strengths. For example, the English often play into their longbowmen, a powerful ranged unit that can be built cheaply and early into the game, and transition well through the ages too. All civilizations start the game in the Dark Ages and must build up their bases, armies and technologies whilst gathering enough resources to build their historical landmark, which takes them into the next age. Throughout the span of a game, a player will work through the Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age and finally Imperial Age, each unlocking a tier of available buildings, units or technologies to purchase. There are three win conditions which games can be customised to not include if need be. A landmark victory, your kind of standard RTS win, but in this case destroying all the enemy landmarks that they use to age up, along with their original town centre. Sacred Victory, controlling all the neutral sacred sites around the map for a set period of time. This in some way discourages enemies that build walls and turtle defensively by hiding in their base. And finally, a Wonder Victory. Every civilization has a wonder they can build when they get to the Imperial Age. 
Once built, if they hold it for a period of time, they win. This does kind of act as a counter strategy to the sacred victory method or other defensive players that are behind you in age progression. The gameplay is still very rock, paper, scissors, with a web of units that are weak or strong against certain other unit types. At its most simplistic level, you might want to build a good enough variety of units that you can challenge enemy armies with the counter units. Simplified examples of this are pikemen being strong against horsemen, horsemen strong against archers, and archers strong against infantry. The game overall has really high levels of polish, with a number of characteristics that have split the player base and even the opinions between myself and Bias quite a bit. In general, it feels like a more new player accessible version of Age of Empires 2, and the graphical art style is mostly not a welcome change either, with seemingly less detail than its much older predecessors, as a more cartoony and colourful theme was chosen this time round. Where it pulls itself back is the effort in making the player immerse with each civilization great voiceovers in their respective languages, and music for each culture playing in the background too. And it doesn't stop there. They also made a noticeable effort in bringing in more historical context to their playstyles, with particular reference to the Mongolians, who play more into their nomadic expectations than ever before. Buildings can be redeployed and moved around the map, upgrades centre around their horseback archers, they deal in livestock rather than farms, and can't build walls like the other civs staying in line with the idea of a civilization that always remained mobile and had no permanent homes. All in all, Bias and I are still a little divided. The release has put in some really impressive intentional effort, but possibly doesn't do enough to stand out amongst anyone that isn't already a fan of the franchise. We should mention we also had a couple of disconnects right near the end of some long games, where we weren't able to reconnect, losing a few hours of effort each time something that hopefully will be resolved soon if it isn't already by now. The devs have signalled an intention to keep updating and improving the game in the future, adding the first update to their proposed winter roadmap, implementing a number of features I was primed to complain about in this video, like the addition of an in-game stat screen, balance updates and the ability to view the map once you've been eliminated, instilling a bit of confidence that you can actually expect the promised updates over the coming months. This does make us hold out hope that it can become the game we were hoping for pre-release. Overall, Age of Empires 4 has us a little conflicted. While the game isn't at all a bad game, it's just all a bit meh. From the devs that created some of the best strategy games of the past 20 years, Age of Empires 4 just feels a little weak. Perhaps our expectations were too high for the game, but you can't really do anything in Age of Empires 4 that you can't do in previous titles, titles that were released more than six years ago. For this reason, it feels like a remaster of an older game, which to be fair is great for some people and not so great for the people looking for a modernized RTS. Giving credit where it's due, the campaign does seem to be very well crafted and overall enjoyable for the lovers of single player. Similarly, the attention to detail in some of the areas of the game is really nice, with language being unique for each culture and that language seems to change over time as you progress through your ages. There's also a clean look to the game, which to us feels a bit cartoony, but other people might really like. I think all in all and fundamentally the game isn't bad, it's just not that good either. There are no groundbreaking changes, no surprises or innovations on previous Age of Empires games, but it does play well, and the cultural differences are exaggerated, making encounters more varied. So overall, if you're a fan of the Age of Empires series and you want to sink your teeth into a new RTS game, this may well be a play, although it's probably one to wait until it's on sale. Let us know what you think of the game in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.